All right. Welcome everyone. Just want to test this stream is working okay. Bit of a different setup today. Mm, not going to be the usual thing, but today we're going to be looking at um, some kanji and some tips on how to get better at kanji. Let me just make sure that this is all okay. So there's a good bit of Japanese practice for everyone. Person leaving the house. Itekimasu. The person staying in the house. Person leaving the house. Itterashai. All right, that sounds good. Okay. So this is going to be a bit of a short lesson today. Just uh, looking at a, a few kanji and uh, getting some tips from. One of my books I use for JLPT, so Nihongo no Ryoku Shiken. So we're just going to go through a few of these and we can kind of see how, um, how important the logic of kanji is. And I think once you kind of understand this logic, it makes it a lot easier to learn a new kanji. All right. There's some great books also that talk about this logic as well. Uh, I don't really have any particular recommendations because I've, I've not actually read one in full. I've just kind of read excerpts of certain books. But I would say uh, remembering the kanji, only abbreviated to RTK. Uh, I forget whose name, I think its name is James something. Anyway, he's uh, quite good. So let's look at some kanji you're looking for. Just a matte kurasai. So let's look at some kanji. Okay. So the first one we have is uh, in. In. Okay. Now this one might look a bit familiar to kao. All right, to buy, but this one's a little bit different, okay? So the first thing I would, uh, let's not worry about this too much actually, but uh, kao is a bit different, all right? It has strokes, whoops. It has strokes uh, inside this box, okay? So I might have to get a thinner pen for this, but basically looks like that on the top. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's got that bit on the top rather than a, a kuchi, an open box. Okay. So we're going to see a bit of a theme with a lot of these kanji today. They kind of act like uh, they either come at the beginning or the end of kanji, all right? And they don't really, they kind of add to the word that's there already. So it's, it's, it's these style of kanji. Okay, so we read it as in, remember our on yomi, okay? Our, our Chinese pronunciation. So uh, when we put this on something, 
What it means is, and this is a Japanese translation, it says, No shigoto ya yaku o motta hito. No shigoto ya yaku ni motta hito. Now, what does that mean? Well, shigoto, this is, you know, work or a job or whatever. Yaku o motsu. All right, so yaku is uh, like a function, basically. So yaku o motsu is someone who has some role, okay? Motahito, all right? So basically, it's, it's someone who's got some role in some job or something like this, okay? So the, the most common one that you're going to see this one on, I would say, uh, is uh, at a year 12 level anyway, is uh, we put it on the end of bank, ginko, all right? So ginko in, this means a banker, okay? So this is very common. When we talk about members in particular, all right, the, for example, um, uh, we have kai in, kai in. Stylus is not the best. I need, it's got a very uh, imprecise um, little tip on the end. I don't know. Oops, even I, I can't believe I just did that. Wasn't thinking. Kai in. Sono in janai. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work very well. Uh, kai in, all right? Uh, so this is like a member of something. All right, so this is like when I was at the gym, for example. You know, kai in ni narimashita. I became a member of the gym. And then, uh, interestingly enough, uh, when you leave the gym, they say it's called in kai. All right? Um... But it's actually a different in, all right? And this is why Japanese can be really uh, confusing sometimes. But this in kind of comes from the kind of the word retire. So it's the same kai, but the in is different. And if, you, if you're just listening to that, you might not pick that up. Well, you wouldn't, it's possible you wouldn't pick that up. You go, okay, well, kai in when I become a member, in kai when I stop being a member, surely the, the kanji is the same, but no, just gotta be a bit careful of stuff like that. Okay, so these are two words, ginko in and Ginko, uh, what's the other one I said? Kai in. Alright, these are very likely to come up in year 12. Okay, next one. Alright, this next one we're talking about rooms. Okay. So you saw I was able to just type in shitsu into the, um, into the keyboard there. By the way, that, that style of input is called tenki. All right, 10, as in the number 10, and key, as in keyboard, key. All right, so 10 key. So this is the, the it's kind of like a unique, um, actually, I shouldn't say unique because I don't know, but at least uh, I, I, I first saw it in Japan, um, and it's kind of uh, come about from the keyboard on the mobile phones. Japanese people kind of used to have the flip phones, which had the hard keys. Um, you have, a, you know, this thing. So it's, it's very, uh, if it, I find it much more efficient for typing in Japanese than a, a usual QWERTY keyboard. But maybe that's just me. Okay, but anyway, Shitsu is how we can type this in. So, what's the Japanese translation for this? It, it says, and by the way, we have a tilde, all right, in front of this, that little wavy line. So what it's saying is, well, this kanji comes at the end. And whatever the tilde is, that's the, whatever. In the first instance, it was bank, right, ginko. Okay, but what do we have here? So it says, no tame no hair. No tame, no hair. Okay, now I want to point out actually understanding Japanese translations, okay? So basically reading a Japanese dictionary and going, okay, this word means this. Like how would you explain this word in Japanese? Uh, I always found this quite tricky, okay, to uh, understand. Because Japanese, you know, if you think about a dictionary in English, it's, you know, they use very precise words and you even have to know the meanings of the words they use in the definition uh, to a very... Uh, um, I can think of the Japanese word here, komakai, but, uh, you know, you really have to know the definition of words well if you want to read about definitions for other words, and you might find that you have to look up a word in the definition in the dictionary itself. You know, you just keep kind of going down this rabbit hole. But anyway, uh, it's, it can be difficult to understand Japanese translations or definitions. But anyway, no tame no heya. All right, so heya, this is our word for room. 
And uh, funnily enough, it doesn't contain this kanji in here, even though this one kind of means room. But um, actually, that's that's a good point, <laughs> if I do say so myself. That's a very good point. So don't be confused with the the word heya, which means room. Okay, look, we do have a difference here with these two kanji. I know it's not much, but there is a difference. So the, the way I uh, would recommend that you remember the difference between these two is if we look here, the only difference is that this one has this roof here, okay? And um, this one, this more has like, uh, probably, I don't know if I should say roof, but I mean, this, this, this radical is for roof on the top. This one on the bottom, uh, it's also roof, but it's like the out, like we're talking more about the, the outside part of the roof, like the tiled part, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. Whereas this bit is more the, the inside, like the ceiling part of the roof. They both mean roofs, but if you just, for this one, this is how I recommend you look at the difference, okay? So this one, we have uh, a roof that we're inside of. So this is why this is room, okay? This kanji means room. But uh, here, ya, we have a roof, all right? And then we have a part. So part of a roof is also a room, okay? Uh, I know that might seem very weird, like why do we have two kanji for such similar things? And maybe you would expect shitsu to come here, but not quite, all right? So this is the, uh, this is ya normally, all right? To pronounce this as he is a bit weird. This is a, a strange reading. Normally read this as bu, okay? But he ya, and this is just shitsu. Okay, so we're gonna see, what is shitsu used for? Well, the, the word that you most commonly have probably heard all this is kyoshitsu, I would say, is one of the most common ones. Whoops. Yeah, that's annoying. I'll just delete all this. Kyoshitsu. Shitsu. So here we have oshieru, and here we have our shitsu from before. Okay, so this is a classroom. Kyoshitsu. All right, uh, I didn't quite finish off the, the translation there, did I? Um, so heya, we said no, no tame no heya. Okay, so heya is room. And tame, this is a really important word to know for year 12, by the way. But this tame, if we say no tame, it's for the purpose of X. Okay, so no tame no heya, it's a room for the purpose of X, whatever it's attached to, okay? So kyoshitsu, we see, well, it's wh whatever is, um, whatever is, this is a purpose, a room for the purpose of this, okay? So oshieru shitsu, all right, to teach. A room for the purpose of teaching. Now, uh, actually, that's not too well about that. <laughs> there's a, there's a, a point about kanken I wanted to make, but we probably don't need to talk about the kanji kente right now. Now, the example that they have here is kaigi shitsu. Kaigi shitsu. All right, this is, I mean, it's, a lot of these words are always worth learning, but I'm not sure that this is very likely to come up in the exam. It could, but I don't know, it'd be pretty cruel, I think. Kaigi shitsu. All right, so kaigi, this is a conference, and shitsu, right? Our conference room. So just a meeting room or whatever. Okay, next one. Okay. That's still, yeah, it looks alright. Okay. Kai. Okay. okay, this one, the only real word we have to know this for is sekai, I would say, uh, but it is good to kind of know this. Um, by the way, these are very, uh, most of these today, maybe, 
Yeah, all of these are receptive kanji, by the way, so you don't have to be able to write them, but it is obviously good if you can write them. Okay. But kai, so what do we have to know this for? Well, sekai, this is what we'll have to know for. Sekai, all right? So this is like the world, right? Sekai. So what does kai mean? Well, kai means no sekai. All right, so it's basically the world of X. All right, so for example, here we have keizai kai. Keizai kai. Now keizai, again, bit of a, an advanced word. Okay, but keizai is the economy, all right, so keizai kai, so it's like the keizai no sekai, and how would we translate this, well, um, it's like the business community, I guess, business world, basically the people who are all involved in business and, you know, the movers and shakers, I guess, <laughs> we want to do this. Okay. Okay. Now this next one's a really good one. I quite like this one. Very important word. And it's one of these words that I I think really this uh, gets introduced into Japanese at about this point. Okay, uh, in year twelve, this word it's like well, this suddenly it starts kind of appearing in materials, and you're expected to know it. Okay. So I'll just show you the kanji first. But, 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 okay, so how would we describe this in Japanese? Well, we say, suru tame no hiroi tokoro, suru tame no hiroi tokoro. Now, again, we have our tame word, and we have hiroi tokoro. So hiroi, this is a word we really have to know, but it's to be spacious, okay? Wide or spacious, all right? So this is an example of a word that you have to know because, for example, oki, which can mean big, and nagai, these words aren't really good enough um, in year 12 anymore, okay? Uh, we, we're gonna get into some more sophisticated words in year 12, all right? So hiroi and its antonym, semai. These are two words which are going to pop up quite a lot in year 12, so you have to know them. And we have tokoro, okay? A lot of you will probably know this, but this is like a place, all right? So, suru tame no hiroi tokoro. So, a place that's, you know, hiroi tokoro, so it's a, a spacious place. Suru tame no, okay? So, again, for the purpose of. So, what are some words that this can come up in? Well, we've got two examples here. I only read one, though, but chushajo. Now this chusha, you, you, you really, I wouldn't even say that this is a receptive kanji. If this comes up in your exam, uh, very likely they're going to give you the reading for this, or they'll say it in listening. I like they put furigana if it's in the reading, but chusha. Is to park, okay? So chusha jo, this is like a parking garage or a parking lot or whatever, okay? Place to park your car. And you might know that in Japan they have uh, even the kind of outdoor ones. They'll have these uh, like uh, uh, mechanized kind of what do you even call them? Basically, the you know just if you use that car spot when you park on it, this metal plate lifts up underneath your car so you can't actually drive your car out without um damaging it i would say and then when you pay the um the thing lowers right it's like connected by a network so yeah, it's very common in japan even in kind of less populated areas um because you know land in japan's quite expensive so you need to be able to make sure you haven't got any freeloaders but anyway all right this is a parking lot 
Now, there is another word that I would recommend that you uh, you learn, which is not the one from this book, but in re this book, remember, this is from my JLPT, so uh, it's going for N1, which is a bit of a higher level than Year 12 Japanese. So there's, there's a word which it kind of skips over because it's like, if you're taking this exam, you would already know this word. So there's, there's, no, there's probably no reason to put it in the book. I can understand that logic. Anyway, it's good for us though. So we can read this kanji as jaw, remember? But we have another reading. It's a different word, which I would say is even more useful. Okay, so basho. Basho. All right, so notice we've got a, um, it's not a long shaw, all right? It's very important to take note whenever you have an, an, a vowel sound, if it's a long or a short sound. Basho. Yeah, this is how we read it. Basho. Okay, so this, this would be like a perfect, uh, um, you know, let me JLPT at 4, maybe JLPT and 3, maybe JLPT at 5, I don't think so. But, you know, it will say, is this read as basho or basho? And so it's very important that you kind of have words like this in your head and that your confidence, like, yep, I know that it's read as sho. Okay, it's not read as sho. So this is the kind of detail you want to get to to do well in JLPT in particular. Okay, but this is a really handy word. All right now, what does this mean? This means place. Okay, it's just a very generic word for place. But from what we just talked about, we also now know that, yeah, this means place. All right, we even saw this in the example. This, the actual uh, alternative reading of this kanji is tokoro. Okay, uh, so tokoro and sho are basically the two um, readings for this. And But here we've learned that this kanji means wide or spacious, okay? So basho is just telling us this is a very generic wide open area for a space, okay? And notice here we also on the left, we have our, um, you know, soil or dirt ground kanji, okay? So this is one way to remember this. Because for example, without this radical, we read this, this kanji, is, it's a different kanji, right? It's yasashi, so it means um, easy. Okay, and even here when we look at this, we see we've got gate on the left. This is the radical, and we also have uh, the kanji which we see from chikai, from close. Okay, and also from, uh, I guess, kinjo, which is, um... <laughs> yeah, let's not go too far down there, but kinjo, it's the same jo as this sho, and the kin, is uh, chikai. All right, so this is like your neighborhood. But anyway, let's not go down, too far down there. All right. All right, this one's a bit advanced, but it, it's definitely uh, come up in um, the year 12 exam, so it's good to know. All right, so there's no way that you uh, will be ever forced <laughs> to have to write this kanji for points in a year 12 exam. But it definitely could come up inside some words. All right, quite a complex one, and I would uh, really recommend you look up the stroke order for this. It's quite interesting stroke order. Um, but what does it mean? Well, in our translate, in our definition, it says tilde no kikai. Okay, and kikai, this is a machine. All right, some type of mechanical machine. All right. So we see this comes at the end of lots of words. So we have, for example, sentaki. Okay, this is th these are the type of words that I would again really expect you to start knowing in year twelve, because we have to know words like sentaku mono. Sentaku suru. All right, so sentaku, this is our laundry. Sentaku mono, I guess, is the laundry. Sentaku suru is like do the laundry. Sentaki is our washing machine. Okay, so we're going to see a bit of a pattern here. All right, next one. Tojiki. 
I, I kind of cut off myself when I was explaining that. But yeah, we really want to know, um, you know, lots of domestic words, okay? Things you can see around the house. Because think of what, what are the topics going to be for year 12, okay? One of them, travel, okay? Not so useful. But number two, nichijou seikatsu. Nichijou seikatsu. Okay, what does this mean? Nichijou seikatsu. This is a lot of you, this would be semester two, the topic. And I'd, I always like to tell people, this is what my topic was when I was in high school. <laughs> you know, I graduated in like the mid 2000s. So it's a kind of good thing about Japanese. It's, it doesn't change too much. We're still talking about the same stuff. Nichi Jou Seikatsu. Okay, so Nichi, you should be able to recognize this guy. This is Dei. Jo, this is not a prescribed year 12 kanji at all, ever. Um, you just have to know it from this word. Um, but I've, I've even seen people write this in hiragana for only year 12 syllabus and stuff. Um, but Seikatsu, we definitely want to know this guy over here. I was actually going to put this in the lesson today, but it didn't come up. But uh, I mean, this, this is a kanji. A lot of you are probably going to uh, have to remember for this year, okay? But this means uh, activity, right? or bustling, or whatever. So, seikatsu, this is um, like everyday life, I guess we can translate this. Everyday, nichijou, and seikatsu, life, or lifestyle, something like this. So this is the, the katsu we see from bukatsu, you know, our after school club, and katsu do, which is activity. And say we really should be known this one by now. You know, we can, very safe, this, actually, this country has quite a lot of readings, but for your 12 purpose, generally you're pretty safe if you read it as say. Like say, uh, like sensei, say to, student, teacher, that kind of stuff. Okay. Anyway, that's enough about Nichijou Seikatsu. Stay on track, Ash. Um, next one, we have... Yeah, where are we? Yeah, these other ones I wouldn't, I wouldn't say are super important. This one could come up, I guess. Okay, Senpuki, okay, but so this is a like a pedestal fan, okay, it's different from those handheld fans, okay, you couldn't call those Senpuki, why? Well remember, ki, this means um, machine, okay, so a handheld fan is not a machine, so it's going to be different from that anyway, but Senpuki, um, come on, think about Japan, all right, this is a very humid place in summer, uh, and uh, you know, you, you you really need a fan, all right? When my fan broke in Japan, I was, I was heartbroken. And I couldn't bring myself to walk and go buy another one. So I just sat in, in my hot room. All right, but our handheld fan, okay? This is uchiwa. Uchiwa. Now both of these words could come up, all right? Uchiwa, this is not, it's not just for a weather thing. If you're talking about lots of cultural things in Japan, like festivals, traditional dress, you know, uchiwa is going to come up a lot. Dentoteki, Nihon no dentoteki na mono desu. Traditional Japanese thing. Okay. So, senbuki. Senbuki, sorry. And notice we got a, this is a kaze, by the way, wind. But, and normally we pronounce this as hu. But here we have a little maru, alright, a little circle on the, on the fu. So it's a pu, alright, and with an extra u. So, senbuki. All right, next one. What was it? Keisanki. Yeah, that's not right about that. That's a calculator. I don't think that's a very fertile word to learn just now. Um, but Keisan is maths or ar arithmetic or whatever, I guess. Arithmetic, sorry. <laughs> arithmetic. Uh, so, yeah, you can kind of imagine why those two go together. All right. Last one. Like I said, a bit of a short one today. Not an exact ideal situation. Well, this isn't working out too bad. We'll see how it looks when I watch the video back, how it looks. As long as the sound is okay, and you can kind of see the kanji. All right, next one. Okay. Now this one can actually be read as machi. And some of you may say, oh, but I already know a kanji for machi. And you're right, 
You actually know two if you think about it. But when I say that this kanji means city or whatever, you might say, hey, but not only do I know a kanji for machi, I know one that means city and it doesn't look like that. And you're right, it's, it looks like this. And you see where we type in machi, I actually get both results here. Okay, this is our other kanji which can be read as machi. So both of these really do mean very similar things, city or town. Um, and we see here we've got a rice field on the left hand side and then this is chō. Right, this is used in uh, Japanese addresses. The, the numbers, basically, that, that kind of designate the block and house number and stuff that people live on. Um, you know, bancho, chō ne. These words are all using chō. So it's like an address word. And uh, we see we kind of have it on the right here as well. Not really. This is a, um, a gyō. I'm actually not sure what you call this radical, gyo, cho, or something like this. But anyway, we can see it's iku, kind of, with this stuff, these two dirt or ground in the middle. Okay, so yeah, both of these can be read as machi, all right? But this is still a receptive kanji we can have in year 12. Oh, wait. Didn't mean to do that. All right. So what are some words we can learn? Well, one... Uh, what I would recommend is this guy. Oops. Okay. Now, how do we read this one? Well, we we should be able to read that first one. This that second one, I'd be very impressed if you guys could read it. Bit of a hard one. Did the same thing twice, Maria. That's pretty funny. All right, let's just zoom out a bit. Okay, so we read this as chu kagai. Chu kagai. All right. Oh, by the way, the translation for this is just machi. All right, it's just city. But anyway, chu kagai. So, chu, this is our center kanji, all right? But we also got to remember that this is kind of synonymous with China, all right? We think of the word chu goku, for example. Um, ka. This kind of means glorious as well. So, don't worry about this, though. It's not really a use of kanji. And gai, what we're talking about. So, this is Chinatown, okay? Now, even in Japan, there is a Chinatown, all right? Just remember that Chinese people and Japanese people are different. But uh, yes, there is a Chinatown in Japan. And uh, it's, it's pretty cool. The one uh, near Yokohama, for example, is very famous. And uh, I went there once. It was pretty, pretty good. I was very impressed um, with Chukagai in China. <laughs> Not China, in Japan. Me, China. Okay. Um, Another one which could come up, although probably a little bit less likely, but it's good to look at anyway, because it can come up in other situations though. Okay, so how we read this? So, chi ka gai, chi ka gai. Okay. Now, chika, you should know from words like chika tetsu. Oh, subway. All right. Chika tetsu. All right. So we have our ground below. And then here we have city. But for chika tetsu, we have iron because it's the railroad. So chika gai. So this is like an underground mall. All right. Now, these are actually quite popular in Japan, especially up in the Tohoku and Hiro. Um, Hokkaido, Chihou, ne? So Hokkaido and Tohoku. So the kind of northeastern parts of Japan, and Hokkaido is, of course, the big island on top. So very, um, very popular up there because in winter it gets freezing in those areas. So, for example, if you ever go to see Yuki Matsuri, 
the snow festival or ice festival in um, Hokkaido over like late January, I think it is. Um, it's minus 15, kind of at a minimum, during, even during the day. It's absolutely freezing in, and that's in Sapporo, right? Sapporo is kind of at the kind of southern end of Hokkaido. It gets much colder the, f the further north you go in Hokkaido. Uh, but yeah, so it's getting minus 15, and on some, I mean, I've been there before, and on some days it was getting to minus 20. And also, you've got to understand there's wind as well, quite strong wind. And uh, it's, it's pretty cold. i got to tell you, it's pretty cold. So uh, to kind of escape uh, this frozen uh, wind blowing on you, you um, go into the Chikagai, all right? So the whole, basically the major part of the Sapporo, the city, uh, there's this underground mall. And most people will, like, above ground, there's all the, like, office buildings. That people are inside of course but then below that all underground and it's kind of connected to the subway as well um because yes there is a subway even in Sapporo I shouldn't make fun I shouldn't make fun of Sapporo it's a very nice place uh <laughs> and I really by the way I really recommend you guys check out the Yuki Matsuri it is awesome 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 but you go into the Chikagai all right Chikagai ni itte kaimono shite nanka oishii mono tabette ma Hokkaido Alright, so what did I say there? Well, you know, go into the Chikagai, do some shopping. And I said, you know, when you think of Hokkaido, crab, okay? This is what Hokkaido is super famous for. So you might try and find some like, crab restaurants downstairs. I'm not sure if I did uh, find any crab restaurants downstairs, but I gotta say I wasn't really looking that much. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there. Those are some uh, really good words to try and remember. And, you know, it's really all about getting a word list, right? Getting a word list together and uh, writing these words down and putting them in columns, all right? So I, I like to have my kanji on the left-hand column, the hiragana reading in the middle column, and then the English on the right, okay? And then you just use a book or whatever and you cover it up and you go down the kanji one by one by one and try and read it and then check that the hiragana is correct and then... Also then check in your head whether the, well, the English is and then uncover the English and read it, okay? And I used to just do that uh, every night before I went to bed, okay? I didn't actually do that when I was in year 12, but you have to remember I went to on exchange to Japan, so I wasn't, uh, I was looking at my word list every day anyway, because um, I was studying. But when I went into uni, I definitely did um, start doing the word list before bed, okay? Just doing a bit of consolidation, reading, try and do about 10, 15, 20 minutes, right? Just read through your word list, and, um, you know, write them out if you've got the time and then go to bed. Okay. So that's what I would do to remember these types of words. Because you have to be able to recognize them when they're written. All right. That's what they are. They're receptive. But if you can write them out, this is really going to help, I think. Understand this kanji. Okay. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. And, um, gambatte kudasai. Hina-san. Okay. Thank you.